Greetings, my name is Cosmic and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you an in-depth guide and review for the Minecraft mod called Epic Knights, Shields, Armor, and Weapons. The first thing I need to say is that I'm a big fan of the Middle Ages. I am highly invested in the culture, history, architecture, and most of all, warfare. I was super excited when I first saw Epic Knights and I knew I had to bring it to your attention. The mod adds a wide assortment of comic gear that is inspired by armor and weapons from the medieval period. It does an amazing job authentically replicating each of these items. This has to be one of the best and most accurate medieval themed Minecraft mods out there, and I'm going to show you all what this mod has to offer. A few things before we get started. Firstly, as I go through each item, I will also be providing some historical facts relevant to the item. I am not an expert on the Middle Ages, so I may get some things wrong, but I'm hoping these bits of information will interest you. Secondly, Epic Knights is a Forge mod, and I am recording this video on Minecraft 1.18.1 and 1.18.2. However, the mod may be available for newer and older versions of Minecraft. Just know that some features might be changed or unavailable on different versions. Thirdly, please let me know what you guys think about my castle. It may not be the flashiest castle out there, but I was aiming for a modest design and I try to make it closely resemble castles that would have existed in the Middle Ages. If you want, I can make some videos in the future showing you guys how to build this castle. You can also leave comments suggesting names for this castle because I couldn't figure out a good name myself. Lastly, if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe for future content. And if you want to try out this mod for yourself, I will have a link for it in the description below. Without further ado, let's get started with the video. Before we get into the new armor and weapons, we need to briefly cover the resources that the mod uses. Fortunately for us, the mod makes it simple and uses Minecraft's vanilla resources. Then we only have to use either the crafting table or blast furnace to produce what we need. To start with, we need any type of wood to make planks and sticks so we can make shields and weapons respectively. Next, we need a supply of wool. In the crafting table, the wool can be crafted into woolen fabric that can be used to make low and medium tier armor. Or you can also use the wool to make banners to utilize the new banner patterns that the mod adds. Then we are going to need leather and leather strips. Like the wool, you just need to put the leather into a crafting table to create leather strips, which are primarily used for making the hilts and poles of the various weapons the mod offers. And finally, we're going to need a ton of iron to make steel. Steel is a new material that makes up the majority of the new armor in Epic Knights, as well as a new tier of weapons and tools that is in between iron and diamond. I'd recommend exploring caves or building your own mine so you can have a steady supply of iron ore. Once you have plenty of iron ingots, you can put them inside a blast furnace, and the mod allows you to smelt them into steel ingots. From steel ingots, you make steel plates, and from steel nuggets, you make steel rings, which are used to make steel chainmail. You can also make small steel plates from steel nuggets. Steel plates, steel chainmail, and small steel plates are the main components that you will use to craft most of the armor in the mod. There is some gear that will require one or two additional ingredients to make. However, I will cover those ingredients when we go over those specific items. Now that we have covered the resources used in Epic Knights, it is time to cover the new armor. I'm going to start with the armor because I think that is what visually stands out the most in this mod. The developer has designed each set of armor to very closely resemble their historical counterparts, which I think is very awesome. You have to see for yourself what I'm talking about. There are 13 full sets of armor and then some extras, so let's get into them. Our first set of armor is the Gamazin set. Despite being the weakest gear, I am actually quite excited to see Gamazin in this mod. Gamazin is a very underrepresented armor in video games and media, even though it was some of the most common armor in the medieval period. Sure, it was often used as padding beneath chainmail and plate armor, but even by itself it was a decent set of armor and relatively cheap too. Unfortunately, in-game Gamazin is weaker than even leather armor, but it is cheaper and easier to make too using woolen fabric and a little bit of leather. 
Leather armor is in that weird spot where by the time you have enough leather to make a full set, you already have a full set of iron armor. Gamison is a far more convenient set of starting gear, and personally, I think it looks better too. You can also dye it, making it more visually pleasing. Next, we have Brigadine, one of my personal favorite types of armor from the Middle Ages. It is body armor that is made from heavy cloth, canvas, or leather lined on the inside with small metal plates riveted to the fabric. It offered less protection than a single plate of armor over the body, but it allowed for greater flexibility. In Epic Knights, this lone piece of torso armor is made from leather and steel plates and has the equivalent armor stat as the vanilla chainmail chest plate. Chainmail chest plate. Yeah. Brigadine is a decent enough item for protection, and you can dye this armor as well to make it rather fashionable. The chainmail armor that Epic Knights provides is nearly identical to Minecraft's default chainmail armor. The main similarity is that they both provide the same armor stat. Otherwise, Epic Knights chainmail armor looks a little different, can be crafted using steel chainmail, and, most importantly, doesn't call itself plate armor. This unassuming helmet may not look like much, but the Norman helmet is a prevalent item in the Middle Ages due to its simple yet effective design. This conical shaped helmet with a nasal guard has just as much armor as an iron helm and allows you to imitate the armies of William the Conqueror in the Norman conquest of England. Next, we have the reinforced chainmail set. This set of armor is basically chainmail, but with some plating mixed in to offer better protection, giving it the equivalent armor stat as iron armor as well as featuring some armor toughness. The reinforced chainmail represents a part of the transitional period when knights and other medieval soldiers were evolving their armor from chainmail to metal plates. The reinforced chainmail set also features the kettle hat, which is another one of my favorite pieces of armor. Honestly though, I'm not sure why I like it. I don't know if it's the wide brim or the open face design, but it's such a cool helmet. Another conical helmet, the Shishak was an Eastern European design similar to the Norman helmet, but it included extra plate pieces to protect around the eyes and cheeks of the wearer. It often came equipped with a chainmail avatail to further protect the wearer's neck and shoulders. In the mod, the Shishak also provides just as much protection as the Iron Helm. Lemula armor is another type of protection that is made from overlapping rows of small armor plates laced together. This type of armor was widespread throughout much of Asia and Eastern Europe. In Epic Knights, Lamella armor is also equivalent to iron armor, however, it lacks leg protection. To construct Lamella armor, you use Lamella rows, which are made by combining small steel plates with leather strips. The face helmet is a helmet equipped with a visor that is sculpted to replicate human features. Historically, these helmets could be very detailed or rather grotesque design. In Epic Knights, the face helmet is made by combining a shishak with small steel plates. Jumping ahead to the 16th century, we have the Cuirassier set. The rising use of firearms in this time period resulted in the declining use of metal armor due to how ineffective it protected against pistols and muskets. Cuirassiers were cavalry regiments that exchanged lances for pistols and discarded most of their armor, keeping only the most essential pieces for melee combat. This included the cuirass over the torso and a helmet, such as the burgonet shown here. The burgonet and cuirass are decent gear in Epic Knights, although the accompanying pantyhose and boots don't provide much protection. This set of armor is mostly for role-playing, by using another Minecraft mod that adds firearms. I think it's a cool set no matter what, because it expands the range of armor that existed in history. Pretty much any mod that adds medieval armor has to add the iconic armor of the Crusaders. Luckily, Epic Knights did not forget. The Crusaders predominantly wore chainmail armor, and they're very distinct great helms. Over the chainmail, they wore colorful surcoats that displayed their coat of arms, as well as protected them from the natural elements. These features make the Crusader one of the most recognizable knights in the medieval era. In the mod, the Crusader armor combined with the matching Great Helm once again provides the same stats as iron armor, this time with more armor toughness. The default surcoat included in the chest component is also dyeable, allowing you to replicate historical knightly orders or even create one yourself. The 14th century knight armor continues where we left off with the reinforced chainmail set. This set of armor represents the continued implementation of plate armor into a knight's arsenal, particularly during the 1300s. Included in this set is the bassinet, a very common helmet normally with an open face design but can be equipped with visors such as this hound skull. In Epic Knights, the 14th century set has an armor stat right in between the iron and diamond sets, as well as provides a decent armor toughness stat. This makes the 14th century knight armor a great option in between the aforementioned vanilla sets. 
The Barbute and Half Armor are honestly a really weird combination. The Barbute is a 15th century helm inspired by Corinthian helmets from ancient Greece. However, the item has an open face design. As for the Half Armor, from what I could find, it is very similar to the Curiosir Armor. It's another type of armor that remained in use during and after the 16th century for standing armies equipped with firearms. What's even weirder is that the main purpose of the Barbute and Half Armor is to be used in crafting recipes to build full sets of plate armor. This may not accurately represent how plate armor was made, but hey, that's how this mod works. The Winged Hussar Armor replicates the iconic gear of the Polish Hussars, a famous heavy cavalry unit that existed from the 16th to 18th centuries. The main features of this chestplate are the prominent angel-like wings fastened to the back of the armor. The wings easily distinguished the Polish Hussars from other military units and were intended to demoralize enemies in a charge. The Polish Hussars were often the deciding factor in many victories against overwhelming odds. Constructed from half armor, feathers, a stick, and rabbit hide, the winged Hussar in Epic Knights has an armor stat right in between iron and diamond armor, making it very effective gear for combat. You'll also stand out very prominently from your friends too. Whenever we hear the word knight, this set of armor is the quintessential image that comes to mind. The knight armor shown here looks a lot like the Milanese armor of the 15th century. Milanese armor was popular throughout Italy along with the ingeniously designed armet helm. In the mod, the helm even comes with a feather plume to complete the look, and you can dye it any color you wish. The full set provides just two points of armor below diamond armor, and while it doesn't provide as much armor toughness, it more than maxes out knockback resistance, making you immovable by most mobs. This set of armor is one of many that represents the peak of European plate armor, which made the knight nearly invincible. The Gothic armor and salad is the German equivalent of the Milanese-inspired knight armor. Both sets of armor existed alongside one another in the 15th century and served many of the same purposes. The main difference was their appearance. While the Milanese armor had very smooth surfaces, the Gothic armor was fluted, meaning it was covered in intricate ridges that gave it a new aesthetic. This is represented a little bit in the visual textures for this set. The Gothic set in the mod provides the exact same stats as the Knight set, making it another excellent and robust set of armor. However, the Salat doesn't come with a feather plume, in case that is important to you. The Kostin Brust armor is an early subcategory of Gothic armor used throughout the Holy Roman Empire during the early 15th century. The most notable features of Kostin Brust armor are the box-shaped cuirass and the long plate skirt both of which are somewhat featured on the in-game model in Epic Knights. The helmet was often the Grand Bassinet, a later version of the standard bassinet that was fixed to the cuirass to maximize protection, but limited mobility. Once again, the custom brust armor matches the knight and gothic armor sets in every stat. The armor includes small steel plates in its recipes. The Grand Bassinet is crafted using the Norman helmet instead of the Barbute. The Maximilian armor is another type of Gothic armor that existed in the early 16th century. It is named after Emperor Maximilian I of the Holy Roman Empire. Maximilian was very passionate about armor, not only for battle or tournament, but also as an art form. The German fluting technique used somewhat sparingly on previous Gothic armor was used all over Maximilian armor, giving it a very extravagant appearance. The armor also adopted the armament as its primary helm instead of the salad. In the mod, Maximilian armor requires blaze powder in the crafting recipes to make it. What needs to be noted is that the set actually provides more armor than what the game allows. Also, its armor toughness is almost equivalent to that of diamond armor, and much like the previous plate armor sets, the Maximilian set prevents the player from being knocked around by mobs. Nearing the end of the selections of armor available, we have the jousting armor, which effectively makes you like a tank. Historically, jousting armor like the very heavy and restrictive Stechzeug was used in tournament joust to help protect the knight from devastating head-on collisions with an opponent's lance. Unfortunately, the widespread recognition of this sport and its associated armor gave rise to the misconception that all medieval armor is as heavy and restricting as jousting armor. In reality, most medieval armor allowed knights to retain a great deal of mobility. The main downside is that armor exhausted them more quickly. In Epic Knights, this set overcaps both armor and knockback resistance and provides the same armor toughness as diamond armor. However, Wearing any or all of the pieces of this set debuffs you with slowness too. Thus, wearing the jousting armor requires you to ride a horse if you want to utilize it. But I think that cements the jousting armor to its intended use. The last set of armor that Epic Knights offers is ceremonial armor. 
This set is basically the previously mentioned knight armor and armament, except now it is gilded with bright gold. In the 16th century, plate armor was increasingly becoming more elaborately decorated so the nobility could show off their wealth. Thus, this kind of armor was more expensive and was often worn off the battlefield for vanity. However, much of this armor could still be used in battle. To represent this, the individual pieces of the ceremonial set offer the same stats as the knight armor, although it does not provide knockback resistance. Also, the set excludes armor for the legs. To craft the ceremonial armor, you combine the correct corresponding pieces of the knight armor with gold nuggets and black dye. Next up, we have the Weapons of Epic Knights. The mod adds to the game a huge variety of weapons from nearly all parts of the European Middle Ages. Some of these weapons I had never even heard of before. Thus, it was a lot of fun researching each weapon and testing them out in the mod. Before we get started, I should note that many of these weapons come with a new two-handed debuff. The debuff activates if you equip these weapons at the same time as anything in your offhand slot, whether that be a shield, torches, food, or building blocks. There are two versions of the debuff. Weapons with two-handed one have minimally reduced attack speed, while weapons with two-handed two have significantly reduced attack speed and attack damage. Thus, you'll have to sacrifice carrying a shield to be able to fight effectively with these weapons. Fortunately, most two-handed weapons come with their own blocking function. This represents the fact that many weapons could be used to parry attacks. However, in Epic Knights, they are intentionally designed to only block certain types of attacks. Here's a list of what they can and cannot block. First, they will block most melee attacks. However, I have found that larger mobs like Endermen and Iron Golems will strike through your block. Which makes sense. They are so large that attempting to parry such attacks would be maniacal. So be warned when facing bigger foes. Secondly, the blocking feature on two-handed weapons has a chance to fail to block a melee attack. In older versions of the mod, the chance to fail to block was so high that attempting to block was almost pointless. But in newer versions of Epic Knights, you will block attacks more often than not, making it far more reliable. Finally, two-handed weapons will not block arrows or explosions. This also makes sense. A sword would provide little protection from these types of attacks. Shields are a far better option. That's about it for the two-handed feature. Now we can go over the individual weapons. I will be looking at the diamond tier weapons and compare them to the vanilla diamond sword and diamond axe because I felt they would make good reference points. I will put the stats for the vanilla weapons on screen right now, but to simplify them, the diamond sword strikes quickly, but its damage is lower, while the diamond axe is hard hitting, but relatively slow. There are over 25 different weapons to look at, so let's get started. First, we have the Stiletto, a dagger with a long, slender blade and needle-like point intended for stabbing. The Stiletto was largely a secondary weapon for knights. It was used to finish off heavily armored opponents by finding gaps in between plate armor, penetrating through chainmail, or even through the eye slits of a helmet. As cool as they would be, these mechanics don't exist in Minecraft, so to translate this function into the game, the Stiletto has the second highest armor piercing stat. It may not deal as much upfront damage as other weapons, but its moderate speed and cheap cost can make the Stiletto an effective weapon against armored opponents in a pinch. Both the Short Sword and Katzbaga are frankly not much different from the Vanilla Sword. The Short Sword deals a little less damage, but is slightly faster. The Katzbaga is a sword with a distinctive S-shaped guard that was the primary close combat weapon of the famous German mercenary army known as the Landsknechte. It is virtually identical to the Vanilla Sword, with it being only slightly faster. While these two swords may not stray very far from the Vanilla variant, they are well-rounded weapons much like the original. The Pike is one of many weapons that gives you extra attacking reach. Historically, the Pike was used by armies in a tight formation to strike at enemies from a safer distance which was also effective in dealing with cavalry charges. In Epic Knights, the pike gives the most extra reach at three extra Minecraft blocks. This is especially useful when dealing with creepers. They won't be able to get close enough to you to trigger their explosion. The pike is similar to the axe in terms of damage and speed and has the two-handed two debuff. However, the pike is one of only two weapons with this debuff that cannot block. The pike is just too long and unwieldy to effectively deflect attacks. Fortunately, the Ranzier and Geese Arme are able to block attacks. They are statistically similar to the Pike, except you sacrifice a tiny bit of extra reach, although the difference is hardly noticeable. 
As I said before, you gain the ability to defend yourself in case a melee opponent gets too close. These weapons are otherwise very similar to the pike and thus make great alternatives if you still want to be able to parry attacks. The Allspies, in my opinion, is a wicked weapon. The metal spike at the tip is very long and replaces some of the wooden shaft of the conventional spear, which is more prone to breaking. When compared to the pike, the Rancier, and Gizarme, the Allspies deals higher damage, attacks a little more quickly, has the ability to block, and has the third highest armor piercing stat. The only downside is that it gives the least extra reach at two and a half blocks, but that is still more than enough to keep a creeper out of range. In comparison to these other weapons I just mentioned, I believe the Allspies is the best out of all of them. The first of the two handed swords is the. <coughs> the Hand and a Half Sword, better known as the Demonetization Sword among the YouTube community. The Hand and a Half Sword is a type of longsword, meaning it is most effective with two hands. However, both the blade and handle are a little shorter than other longswords, so it's still possible to use it effectively with a shield like a one handed sword. This is reflected in the mod. The weapon's attack speed is hardly reduced when you equip it with a shield. Otherwise, it is a well-rounded weapon, offering more damage than the vanilla sword and attacks more quickly than the axe. The s dock is another type of longsword that was used in the late medieval period. This sword was developed to more effectively combat mail and plate armor. It is slightly longer than a typical longsword and is tapered to a sharp point so that it can penetrate mail armor or strike in between plates, similar to the stiletto. In Epic Knights, the s dock is comparable to the hand and a half sword, but it has extra reach and a little bit of armor penetration. Hailing from the Scottish Highlands, the Claymore is a visually distinctive longsword. The straight, forward sloping quillons of the crossguard gives the weapon a very imposing appearance. The Claymore was a strong symbol of the Scottish Highland way of life. In the mod, it provides the most upfront damage compared to the hand and a half sword and the S-Dock, but it is also the slowest of the three swords. The Claymore is a simple yet effective two-handed sword, and it's one of my personal favorites in the mod. Next, we have the Zweihander. This was the hallmark weapon of the previously mentioned Landsknechte. Let me tell you, this sword is huge. It demanded using both hands to use the sword most effectively. Due to its immense size, it was often utilized similar to pole arms in the armies of the Landsknechte. Ironically, in the mod, you are strong enough to hold this weapon in one hand. The Zweihander deals more damage than the axe and is a tad slower, but it comes with more than two blocks of extra reach and some armor piercing. The Flame Bladed Sword is a variation of the Zweihanda, characterized by its undulating blade, giving it a flame-like quality. It was both decorative and apparently functional, reportedly causing unpleasant vibrations in opponents while parrying. In the mod, it is virtually identical to the Zweihander, except it has one feature unique to the Flame Bladed Sword. It has the ability to inflict non-healing wounds, a debuff that reduces the max health of any mob struck by this weapon. It reduces their max health by 5 hearts and lasts for 15 seconds. This is a really cool feature if you find yourself switching between multiple targets capable of healing themselves, such as witches. The Lockaber Axe is a Scottish polearm notable for its immense axe head. The blade itself extended into a sharp tip and was attached to the end of a long wooden shaft. Similar to pikes, Lockaber axes and other polearms were used by infantry to fight against both cavalry and other infantry from a distance. In Epic Knights, the Lockaber Axe is really slow, but it deals extremely high damage and gives two and a half blocks of extra reach. Following, we have a very similar weapon, the Concave-Edged Halberd. The Halberd was the quintessential polearm and a versatile Swiss weapon. The axe head allowed the Halberd to fight armored opponents very effectively. The spike at the top allowed it to perform a similar function to the pike, and the spike on the back of the axe head could be used to pull enemies off of horses. In Epic Knights, the Halberd deals the most damage out of all of the modded weapons. It is slower than the Lockerber Axe, but it gives two and a half blocks of extra reach and some armor piercing. The Halberd is the most powerful weapon in the mod. The first of the blunt weapons that Epic Knights offers is the Heavy Mace. The mace was a relatively cheap weapon that was able to effectively fight armored opponents. Rather than aiming for the gaps between plate armor, the mace was used to strike the armor itself with enough weight and force to cause serious injury. In the mod, the heavy mace is stronger than the vanilla axe and it comes with a healthy armor piercing stat, making it an effective weapon against armored foes. The heavy warhammer served a very similar purpose to the heavy mace. 
The Warhammer was also used to combat armored opponents, striking with enough force against their plated surfaces to cause trauma underneath. The spike on the other side of the head made the Warhammer a more versatile weapon, as it could be used to grapple opponents or shields. The Warhammer deals even more damage than the heavy mace, is a little slower, and it is tied with a stiletto for the second highest armor piercing stat. The Luthan Hammer is a longer version of the heavy Warhammer. It was used in two hands rather than one. Thus, it was classified as a polearm. With the extra length, the Luthan Hammer generated even more force behind its blows. In Epic Knights, it deals more damage than the axe and comes equipped with the highest armor piercing stat. However, it is also the only other two hand weapon that cannot deflect attacks, essentially making this weapon a glass cannon. The Morning Star is another option for blunt weapons. It is similar in purpose to the mace, but differs in design. While the Mace Atmos had flanges molded on its head, the Morningstar's head is very spherical and it is adorned with multiple sharp spikes all around it, making it a deadly combination of blunt force and puncturing attacks. In the mod, the Morningstar is a fairly basic weapon. It is pretty identical to the axe, being only slightly faster and dealing slightly more damage. The Flail is an interesting weapon. It is made iconic by pop culture, though it is speculated it saw very limited use historically. The spiked metal ball is attached to the wooden shaft through a length of chain. While a cool weapon, and it did have some uses in being able to strike around an opponent's shield, the flail was imprecise and hazardous to the user. Therefore, it was very rare to see in battle. In game, the flail deals more damage than an axe and is slower. But like the Warning Star, it has no other additional stats at this time. Near the end, I have saved the one knightly weapon that may be more famous than the sword, and that is the lance. One of the original and principal defining features of the knight was their style of combat. Primarily, they were warriors who fought on horseback, but the knight's unique tactic was the mounted charge, a deadly attack that could destroy most infantry lines. The weapon most associated with the mounted charge was the lance. When moving at the top speed of a horse, the lance was a death sentence for anyone in its path. In Epic Knights, the lance is a very unique option. But before I get into how to use it, I have to mention that every lance is beautifully and uniquely decorated in each of the different weapon materials. Now, to use the lance, you have to follow a very specific step-by-step -step process. First, you have to be on horseback to make use of this weapon. Attempting to attack with the lance while not on a horse will do nothing. Next, you must right-click to couch the lance. Then, all you have to do is move forward and you can damage mobs with it. Note that you have to recouch the lance after every mob you hit. The lance is a devastating weapon, though statistically it may not look like it at first. The lance seems to be slower and weaker than the axe. However, since you are attacking opponents from horseback, the attack speed doesn't really matter. Your lance will be ready the next time you charge your opponent. As for damage, extra damage is dealt based upon the speed of your horse and the armor you are wearing. It is implied by Epic Knights that the more protection your armor offers, the heavier it is and thus the greater the damage. Along with some good extra reach and armor piercing, the lance is not to be underestimated. The next weapon to cover in Epic Knights is the Longbow. The Longbow was a powerful ranged weapon on the battlefield. It was widespread throughout all of Europe, but the Longbow created a unique culture in England specifically. The population was encouraged and sometimes even required by law to practice archery in their free time. This was done so that when England raised an army for war, it had a large, well-trained unit of Longbowmen that helped the country win many battles. In the mod, the Longbow is made from a hilt, four sticks, and three string. The longbow, like the vanilla bow, does normal damage and critical damage. The longbow deals up to 8 normal damage, compared to the vanilla bow's 6 damage. For critical damage, which is the damage dealt when an arrow is shot after drawing a bow to its full length, the longbow randomly deals between 9 and 14 damage, whereas critical shots from the vanilla bow deal between 6 and 11 damage. I know that was a lot of numbers, but this means that when you fire exclusively critical shots, on average, the vanilla bow takes 3 to 4 arrows to kill a creeper or zombie, while the longbow will usually take two to three arrows. Also, arrows shot from the longbow don't drop as quickly as the vanilla bow. The longbow does have one main weakness though. It takes longer to draw the longbow than the vanilla bow, but here's where it gets really weird. The longbow visually looks like it draws just as fast as the vanilla bow. However, through rigorous testing, I have found that functionally, the longbow will only fire critical shots a moment after you have drawn it to its full length. I have not determined if this is intentional or if it is a visual bug, 
but it is something to be aware of when using the longbow. Either way, the longbow is an awesome addition to the arsenal of epic knights. The crossbow is another iconic weapon from the European Middle Ages, although it was used in parts of Asia before this time period. Improved material production in the Middle Ages allowed for more powerful crossbows to be developed, becoming very deadly weapons by the end of the Middle Ages. They were more user-friendly than bows because they only required strength to load the crossbow, not to aim and fire it as well. But they were slower to load and more expensive to make, especially when they started to use higher quality metals. One famous unit that used this weapon were the Genoese crossbowmen from northern Italy, who combined crossbows with pavisay shields to protect themselves while reloading. The heavy crossbow in Epic Knights represents crossbows that were made during the later parts of the Middle Ages. This is because its prod, the bow-like launching device, is made from three steel ingots. The rest of the heavy crossbow is made using two string, a tripwire hook, and a pole. The heavy crossbow deals 9 to 14 damage for every arrow fired, compared to the vanilla crossbow's 6 to 11 damage. The downside to the heavy crossbow is that it takes more time to reload than the vanilla crossbow. This time, the draw animation does match the reloading speed. The heavy crossbow is a powerful ranged weapon, but be wary of its long downtime between shots. Next, we have a handful of tools that I like to consider the peasant weapons. These are the blacksmith hammer, the barbed club, the club, and the pitchfork. The blacksmith hammer and barbed club are almost identical to the diamond axe, but the blacksmith hammer provides a small amount of armor piercing. The club is a two-handed weapon that deals a lot of damage, but is quite slow and unable to block. The pitchfork provides an extra three blocks of attacking reach, and its damage is about the same as the iron rensure. However, you can use a shield with it. At this time, these tools cannot be crafted and, as far as I could tell, cannot be obtained by any other vanilla means. Personally, I think they are fun role-playing additions. Grab your torch and pitchforks! Time to hunt some ogres! The Messer is a unique addition to the arsenal of epic knights. This single-edged sword from Germany has a rather unconventional design. The term Messe is German for knife, referring to the hilt design that was constructed like that of a standard kitchen knife rather than a sword. These extremely long knives that were used by professional soldiers were referred to as Kriegsmesse, or war knife. In the mod, the Messer is made from an iron short sword, an iron ingot, and an iron nugget. Its damage and speed is nearly identical to that of the diamond sword. However, what makes this weapon extremely unique is its ability to block attacks like a two-handed weapon, but it doesn't have either of the two-handed debuffs. Historically, the Messer's grip allowed for one or two-handed use, much like the hand and a half sword. The Messer in Epic Knights embraces that, making it a very versatile weapon. We are at the very last weapon that Epic Knights offers, and that is the Noble Sword. Made from an iron hand and a half sword and three gold nuggets, the Noble Sword has slightly less damage but more speed than the iron hand and a half sword. Its primary appeal is the gold coloring on its crossguard, giving it a much more regal appearance. Much like ceremonial armor, historical swords that were more elaborately decorated would be commissioned by those who wanted to show off their wealth. The Noble Sword is both an effective weapon and a beautiful decorative piece. Now we are coming up on the Shields of Epic Knights. Shields were extremely important throughout not only medieval Europe, but most of history in the world. In many cases when soldiers were not equipped with adequate armor, a shield was a very cost-effective tool that provided excellent protection in combat. The mod adds a wide range of shields modeled after the many different styles found in medieval Europe. These include kite shields, heater shields, round shields, bucklers, pavisés, and more. All shields are available in every Minecraft resource and the mod steel material. To build a shield, you need planks, steel ingots, and the material of your choosing. First, you construct the wooden variant of the shield using the planks and steel ingots. Then, to upgrade it, you place four ingots of your choosing around the wooden shield in the crafting table. There are a couple exceptions to this process. First, the bucklers and targes are made directly from the material you choose and steel ingots, skipping the need for planks. Secondly, all raw notches are made by placing eight ingots around a wooden round shield. The main advantage for Epic Knight's shields is that they all provide more durability than the vanilla shield, even the wooden ones. However, as much as I would love to go into more detail for each shield, both historically and in-game, the shields in Epic Knights don't have very much variation from one another. Every shield has roughly the same durability, except Rondashes, which by far have more durability than the rest. The only main difference between the shields is that every Pavisay gives you the slowness 2 debuff when held in your main hand, but it won't give the debuff when in your offhand. 
Oddly, only the netherite variant of the Rondashes give the same debuff. A little side note, the most recent update for Epic Knights fixed a huge bug where shields would get instantly destroyed by a wide range of attacks. These included creeper explosions, attacks from larger mobs like the Iron Golem, and strikes from axe-wielding Vindicators. At least now that won't happen unless you are playing on an older version. The update was very recent, so I figured I should at least mention that. Personally, I hope to see a future update that gives the shields more uses. The extra durability is nice, but I think each shield could be more distinguished from one another. At minimum, it would be nice if these shields gave extra stats and buffs. Nothing game-breaking, just a little something here and there to give each shield a unique purpose. A function that would be really cool to see is the ability to place down and pick up the Pavise, giving it the portable cover roll that it had historically. Nevertheless, I am happy that Epic Knights adds a wide range of medieval shields. Of course, knights weren't the only ones who wore armor for protection. As I stated when I was talking about the lands, knights were largely defined by their combat style, which was fighting from horseback. Thus, it makes sense that the horses would also wear armor, which was called barding. There are only two types of horse armor added by the mod, but I felt I should at least mention them. These are the barding and chainmail horse armor. Just like most other horse armor in the game, these are not craftable, but can be found in treasure chests such as those in desert pyramids and jungle temples. Unfortunately, I have no idea how much armor either of these items give. I'm sure there's a way to find out, I just don't know how. No matter what, being able to find horse armor of any type so you can better protect your trusty steed is rewarding in its own way. Just now you have a couple more styles to choose from. Near the end, Epic Knights adds a large variety of new banner patterns as well as adds more uses for banners. There are 18 new banner patterns in Epic Knights, each one very distinguished from one another. You can pick powerful animals, various religious crosses, or a number of other items as the focal point for your personal banner. Unfortunately, at this time I have yet to figure out how you get any of these new banner patterns. If you know, please leave it in the comments down below. In the medieval period, knights would wear a cloth outer garment over their armor known as a surcoat. The surcoat served many purposes, one of which was displaying their coat of arms, an identifying visual design that would associate a knight to their lord, country, knightly order, or others. Surcoats were often brightly colored, which was especially useful on the battlefield to help distinguish between allies and foes. Caparisons are cloth outer garments that follow the same concept, but for horses. Shields were often blazoned with coats of arms as well. To create a surcoat for your armor in Epic Knights, all you have to do is combine a banner of your design with any torso armor. You can also apply banners to horse armor and shields. Thus, you can show off your coat of arms to your friends or dress everyone in your group with the same surcoat design to help identify each other in the middle of combat. That covers everything in Epic Knights. Before I end the video, I'm going to briefly mention some other mods that I think can go well with it. I highly recommend just enough items to help you figure out the various crafting recipes for Epic Knights. Other mods that add other useful bits of information include Durability Tooltip and YDM's Mob Health Bar. Also, Target Dummy was very helpful in displaying the damage amount for each weapon. As you may have already noticed, I used Human Companions and Supplementaries to enhance the aesthetics of my environment for this video. I used Human Companions so I could employ various soldiers to stand guard in my castle and have them wear the various weapons and armor of Epic Knights. Supplementaries is a mod that adds various items and blocks that are decorative or have neat little functions, such as goblets, hourglasses, sacks, jars, signs, pulley blocks, rope, and more. Pretty much any mods that add more generated structures and new mobs to fight would greatly enhance your medieval Minecraft world. More structures means more exploration opportunities, and more types of mobs to fight means you can try out and make use of the various weapons and armor that Epic Knights offers. Some examples include flattery structures, dungeons enhanced, Valhelsia structures, dungeon crawl, and orcs. I am well aware of a mod made by the same developer of Epic Knights that is called Medieval Siege Machines. The mod looks really cool, and I'm sure it would go well with Epic Knights, but I believe that should be covered in its own video, plus at this time it is only available for Minecraft 1.16.5. A couple resource packs I used include BVT Invisible Item Frame and Famous Paintings, but you can try out any resource pack you like. Before I end this video, there is one very particular mod I have to address. There is absolutely no way I could make a review on Epic Knights without at least mentioning this mod.
Of course, I am talking about the Epic Fight mod. How could I possibly review Epic Knights without covering Epic Fight? Epic Knights was designed to be compatible with this mod. If you want the two mods to work together, you will need to check out Epic Knights CurseForge page for instructions on how to get the files necessary to make it work. What is Epic Fight? It is a mod that completely overhauls the combat system in Minecraft. It adds new attack animations for both players and mobs that makes fighting in Minecraft more challenging and more satisfying. Not only that, it adds a few new weapon categories with their own attack patterns and special abilities, including daggers, long swords, great swords, tachi, and a katana. Epic Fight deserves its own dedicated video to be able to fully cover what this mod offers. With both mods installed and the correct compatibility files, Epic Knights seamlessly integrates itself into the Epic Fight combat system. All of Epic Knights weapons adopt the attack animations available to their respective weapon types. Estocks and Claymores use longsword animations. The Svihandar uses greatsword animations. Pikes and Halberds use the spear animations, and so on. Epic Fight pushes Epic Knights to the next level that makes using the mod so much more fun. When you are using the Epic Fight mod, the weapons and armor of Epic Knights luckily don't change a lot. The damage values for many weapons get rounded up or down to the nearest hold number, so this will hardly change their performance in combat. Their attack speeds will affect the speed of the new animations used, even if different weapons use the same animation. For example, both the Halberd and Allspeeds use the spear animations. However, the Halberd attacks much more slowly than the Allspeeds, just as it does in vanilla. As for the armor, they all gain two additional stats, Stun Armor and Weight. Whenever you deal damage to an opponent, they will be stunned, and the same can be done to you. Stun armor increases the time between stuns, thus reducing how often you are stunned. Weight decreases the duration of each individual stun, but also decreases your attack speed. However, the difference in attack speed isn't too great, and it affects faster weapons more than slower weapons. While not exactly a direct correlation, the stun armor and weight of an item will generally increase with the armor level of the item. Once again, Epic Fight brings Epic Knights to a whole new level. These two mods combined make your Minecraft modding experience so much more fun. Of course, Epic Knights is heavily designed with Epic Fight in mind, but I cannot express enough how well they work together. If you want to try out Epic Knights with any other mods, you have to try Epic Fight. And that is all for Epic Knights. As I stated at the start of the video, I think this is one of the best medieval Minecraft mods out there. I have not seen any other mods even come close to what Epic Knights has to offer. The huge variety of weapons, armor, and shields that very closely replicate their historical counterparts makes the mod very immersive and easily enhances any medieval Minecraft world all on its own. I had so much fun playing around and reviewing Epic Knights, and I hope you guys will enjoy this mod as much as I did. I also had a lot of fun building this castle. I wanted to create an environment that matched the mod I was reviewing. It took some extra time, but I am extremely proud of the castle. Once again, if you want me to make videos on how to build this castle, let me know in the comments below. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. I am returning with more videos in the near future, so please subscribe so you can be notified when new videos come out. And leave a comment below tell me what you liked about this video or suggestions for future videos. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, farewell.